The James Webb Space Telescope is as much of a telescope as it is a kind of looking glass. As the world celebrates its one-year anniversary this month, it's important to remember that Webb is like humanity's time machine. Every ancient star and every early galaxy we look at through Webb is us getting to witness the growing years of the universe. Fun fact. The senior project scientist for the telescope at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, Dr. Jane Rigby, revealed that this was the elevator pitch for James Webb Space Telescope. We're going to show you the baby pictures of the universe. And indeed it has. Before JWST, astronomers knew of only a small handful of candidate galaxies that existed in the first billion years after the Big Bang. Within the past year, hundreds of them, bigger and brighter than expected, packed with forming stars swirling around supermassive black holes, have been confirmed. One of Webb's science goals was also to help us understand our origins. Where do we belong in the grand scheme of the cosmos and its workings? As conscious beings, looking at ourselves through the lens of astronomy is known one of the most grounding, humbling, and contemplative experiences. We're lucky to be alive at a time when we get to witness the cosmos like never before, albeit vicariously, through the eyes of Webb. And a stunning discovery that most beautifully fits this aspect of the James Webb has just come through. The James Webb Space Telescope has detected the earliest known carbon dust in a galaxy ever. And understanding the gravity of this discovery gives it a whole new dimension. One that possibly links to our own origins. Orbit. Beyond the blue. James Webb Space Telescope made its first detection of diamond-like carbon dust in the universe's earliest stars. The discovery suggests that the earliest galaxies formed more quickly after the Big Bang than previously thought. But we have heard of that almost a hundred times now, with a hundred different galaxies that Webb found. So what sets this one apart? The fact that carbon is the backbone of all life. Carbon is the main element in organic compounds, so carbon is essential to life on Earth. Without it, life as we know it could not stand a chance. Using the powerful space telescope, a team of astronomers has spotted carbon in 10 different galaxies that existed as early as just 1 billion years after the Big Bang. The detection of carbon dust so soon after the Big Bang could also shake up theories surrounding the chemical evolution of the universe. This is because the processes that create and disperse heavier elements like this should take longer to build up in galaxies than the age of these young galaxies at the time the James Webb Space Telescope sees them. The early universe was made up of mostly hydrogen and helium with tiny traces of some heavier elements, meaning the first stars and galaxies should have the same composition of just these light elements, not complex, organic elements. Conventional models of the universe's chemical evolution suggest that heavy elements like carbon and oxygen are forged in the nuclear furnaces at the heart of stars. When the first stars had run out of the fuel for nuclear fusion and reached the very end of their lives, they exploded in supernovas dispersing the material they had forged through the cosmos. This stellar matter is integrated into interstellar dust. Hence the famous knowledge bomb that the late Carl Sagan dropped in his original award-winning TV series Cosmos. We are made of star stuff. Because we literally are. When dense patches of this dust collapsed, this material became the building blocks of the next generation of stars, which are thus richer in heavy elements and sit in similarly enriched galaxies. The cycle went on and on until we came around to be. And it continues to this day, and will continue long after we are gone. This is what we have known to be true. But the new findings challenge this theory. The galaxies where they saw the dust are estimated to be somewhere in the region of 10 million years old. That implies there must be a creation and dispersal method for carbon that works on a relatively short time scale. 
Not only do these findings exemplify the kind of science that wouldn't have been possible before the JWST, it ultimately raises questions about our own cosmic history. The wavelengths of light emitted by early galaxies are stretched by the universe's expansion as it travels across billions of light years, thus taking billions of years to reach us. This results in ultraviolet light from galaxies being shifted down the electromagnetic spectrum, a process called redshift. The more distant, and thus earlier, the galaxy, the more extreme the redshift is, meaning light from the very first galaxies is stretched out to infrared wavelengths. Light from these galaxies has been crossing the cosmos for as long as 12.8 billion years, and is now infrared light. The JWST is the most sensitive infrared telescope ever sent out into space, and the only one capable of not just finding, but also resolving features like these carbon fingerprints in the light from such distant galaxies. Regarding the future of this research, scientists explained that there are two possible avenues to explore. The first is that, on the observational side, the JWST is collecting more data, so we can look at larger samples of galaxies and see if we can learn anything linking this carbon fingerprint with specific properties of the galaxies. On the theoretical side, scientists may now start to think about what astrophysical objects and events could produce carbon on a short time scale. There is still a lot of work to be done, but with the web and tremendous work of researchers, we're in safe hands. The observatory was launched on Christmas in 2021, and scientists spent the next six months prepping the telescope for action. Unfolding its sunshield and the honeycomb-like array of golden mirrors, then running countless tests of the four instruments used to observe the cosmos. When it was ready, Webb embarked on its journey to peer into the depths of the universe. NASA put out for science goals for James Webb, and one of them happened to be trying to look back in time, as far as we possibly can, to see some of these first galaxies that ever formed. A year and a half after its launch, that goal has remained the most exciting part till now. We're continuing to push the boundaries of how much further we can go, and how much we can push this telescope to see as far as it possibly can. Though the telescope is operated by NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency, this is the telescope serves the whole of humanity. And, we do know that for sure. Beyond the Blue.